So in this tutorial, we'll quickly build a online dashboard uh, using a sample set of data. And uh, what we're going to build is exactly similar dashboard. So let's get started. So we will log into the online dashboard. And uh, once we log in, we see the dashboard editor icon. We click on that. And the so let's look at the data that we will be working on. So this is the data in Excel CSV format. And as you see, the first row in the data is the column names. So that's the requirement. And if you don't have it, you can create a additional row and create column names for it. Now, to provide data, there are multiple ways you can provide data to InfoCaptor. One is you can copy paste data from Excel or you can point to a CSV file. So if I were to just copy the data, I can click Control A and uh, or I can selectively say these are the columns I want and this much data I want to work with. I right click on it. I click on copy and I click on the data tab and I expand the copy paste node and right here I paste it and when I paste it I can name the data set and I can simply say analyze this data and once I click on it it automatically separates them into dimensions and measures now we want to work with the complete data set. The data set has like 10,000 rows in it. And uh, if um, as long as your browser and machine has enough memory, you can uh, bring data from CSV file. And uh, if for larger set of rows, it's typically recommended to use a database. So you upload the data into a database and then you use it. But for a smaller set under 10,000, 50,000 rows, and as long as your machine has enough memory, like this particular machine has 6 gigs of RAM, so loading up 50,000, 100,000 rows easily works through Excel. And all this, all the, whenever you load data from CSV or copy paste it, the data is stored in the memory uh, within the browser, so it's very fast in the response. It doesn't touch the server when you do interaction with the dashboard. So in this particular situation, what we're interested in is to simply point to the complete data set. So I can copy the entire operation. I can simply say control A and paste it. Or I can go back here and simply choose a file. Point the file right here and click open so as the complete data is loaded in the memory it 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 separates the columns into dimensions and measures and typically all the numerical columns are put in the measures bucket and all the dimensions are the alphanumerical columns just let's get familiar with the info capture and visualizer interface so you have three tabs. We have visualizer, you have data, and you have the dashboard editor. So dashboard editor is where you drag and drop widgets to do prototyping and stuff. And data tab is where you provide which way you want to bring data into the dashboard and visualizer. And visualizer is kind of a data discovery area where you point to data you work with it you analyze different ways you you build charts and once you like what you see you can publish it to the dashboard so you have rows columns and values and it's very straightforward so i i can simply drag category i can simply drag dimensions i can simply drag values and it you can swap it and this is how it works but what we are focused right now is how to build this dashboard so let's take a look at this dashboard what does it show us it says uh, it shows sales by year and it has the legends that is the product line 
So let's focus on how to get this. So I'll reset this and as you notice there is a date column. So what I can do is I can right click on this and say create a date hierarchy. Once I click on this it automatically creates a bunch of columns for me to work with. It says year, quarter, weekday, month name, day and the date. So if I drag the date here and that's what I get it and if I simply point it to make it a vertical bar chart I see this. Now notice how the bars are so thin because so we'll make this year column as a string column and I refresh the analysis and now I see it. So the trick is on the X axis I can have a numerical value or a string character. So for example if I remove this and if I put say customer class and there I have it. So it's very straightforward on the X axis anything you want on the X axis needs to go on the columns bucket and anything that you want a color separator or category separator goes on the rows bucket. So if I put here and I want product line as the legends I can click here. So there I see so we are almost there what we want to build here. So you have the legends product line and you have on the x-axis the year. <clears throat> so let's add few more details to it. So I'll click on sales I bring it here but now I, if I wanted to make it a stack bar chart I can click on this visualizer picker and I can see how the stack bar is. So this is what I see. And what I can do is once I'm good with this it automatically generates the title for you sales by order date and product line. And if, if this is good enough I can publish it to the dashboard. So where is going to publish it? So in this case I'm going to create a new dashboard page. I'll say actions new page and click on I'll name it retail dashboard. So whichever dashboard is active in the editor that's where the visualizer will publish it. So let's say if you wanted to publish to another dashboard page, you can simply click on it and make it an active and it will publish it there. So I go back to the visualizer tab and there is this button called add analysis to the dashboard. So I click on that. But before I do that, it wants me to save the data set to the dashboard. And remember this is in memory data because we pointed to a, to a CSV file. So it needs to publish all the data to the dashboard. So I'll click on the save button and what it will do is it will it will launch a mini ETL process which will upload all the rows onto the server. And once the data is uploaded I click on I add analysis to the dashboard and there I see it. So I have this widget added to the dashboard and what I see is it automatically placed it uh, nicely within the grid and it left some space here so by default when you add it it, it puts the dashboard widgets the analysis widgets on the right hand side and any parameter that you will see down the line it will put it on the left hand side so let's leave the space as it is and you can move these things around if you like to move it you can do it and uh, so let's get back to the visualizer. So the visualizer is kind of a factory, like a chart factory. You can build visualization, you can change it. So if I say swap this and I can add this as well. And now that the data is saved, it will not prompt you again. Unless you change anything, you add a new formula, it will prompt it to save the data set. I don't want this, so I'll delete it. And I can simply select it, go to arrange and delete it and it will get rid of it from the editor. So the next thing that I want is is sales by order date and customer class. So in this case it's a simply 
a matter of changing the row dimension. So I go back to the visualizer. I make sure order date here is on the x axis. I right click on this product line and remove it. And I bring the customer class. And what I do is I click again on this button and there I see it. I make sure that both are size the same. And let's look at what is needed on the next one. So this widget is saying on the x axis I see affiliate and it's showing profit by affiliate and by quarter. So the quarter is the uh, row separator, the category separator. So let's go this. I go back to visualizer. I get rid of this. I make sure I drag profit into the values. And this is the affiliate. And I want is the quarter. So what I can do is I can bring this order date quarter field. There you go. So I can make it shorter. And notice how the legends in this case are outside and whereas in this case they are inside the chart. So I can bring this legend inside by click on change properties and this is where I go. So inside the miscellaneous I see show legend and I can completely disable it if I don't need it. But in this case I need it and I'll say inside. But it's a little bit off the screen because the chart size. So what I can do is I can manipulate the X position and there I see it. And notice how the color scheme for this one is a little bit different and it's a group chart not a stack chart. So I'll click on this and change it to a group chart and I can also invoke the color palette and I can switch to a different color palette or maybe I can simply reverse it yes so I reverse the color palette <coughs> and once I'm fine with this I can click back on this add analysis to the dashboard so it's adding it to the bottom of the screen you can simply drag it and put it just right next to this widget All right. So the last widget that we want to work is is almost similar it is profit by category and quarter date. So the changes that we will need to do is replace the affiliate. I'll remove this and I'll add the category. And once I'm good with it, click back on add and it adds to the bottom I bring it back and make it here just right here to fill this grid just make sure it matches the dimensions and there are two remaining pieces what you see on the left is the warehouse radio control and the region lookup checkbox control and we can add that very straightforward we go back to the visualizer and what we say is the warehouse. So you see the dimension here warehouse. I right click on this and create a parameter. And when I see this it gives me the option all the values that are distinct values under the warehouse dimension. And I can choose to make it a radio button. Once I do that, I can say add as parameter to the dashboard. So you notice that the parameter is already added on the left hand side. I can go back. 
so as you see if you select any value in this it automatically affects all the charts on the dashboard so you don't have to do any configuration any linking up nothing it's automatically understand that this is part of the dimension data set and every chart reacts to it I go back here and I select region lookup right click on it create parameter and this time I'll check select the checkbox and this also works the same way so my dashboard is almost complete and I can save it and since this is an online dashboard and if you wanted to make it public what you can do is make it public and so by clicking on this you can make it a private dashboard or public dashboard so what is a public dashboard when you when you make it a public dashboard you can share this URL and email it to anybody and they can view this dashboard and it's an interactive dashboard so all the data is live and embedded within the dashboard so that's a short tutorial on how to make a quick dashboard using Excel CSV file